Hello there and welcome. My name is Michael Fudge and this is another SQL screencast. In this particular screen, screencast we'll be exploring uh, the SQL views statement and views are a way of taking your tables and abstracting the complexities behind the underlying internal data model uh, it's simplifying things a bit for your end users. So we'll not only look at um, you know how you can create views, how you can alter and drop views, find them in the information schema but we'll also be looking at the rationale for using views in the first place in your database applications. Okay? Let's begin by talking about why you'd want to use a view in the first place. If I run this simple select query on the FudgeMart employees table, you'll see I get back a list of data. In this, in this data is uh, the job title of the employee. Now if you look here, there's sales associates, department managers, um, store managers and CEOs. Uh, a business rule of FudgeMart is that anybody who doesn't have the title sales associate is in management. So one thing you can do is say, you know, if you want to write a query that said, show me all the employees that are in management, you would say something like this, select everything from FudgeMart employees where <clears throat> employee job title it does not equal sales associate. When you execute that, you get only the employees that are in management. Now, here's the conundrum. Are you going to remember that this particular where condition is the rule that tells you who is and who is not in management? Yeah, you might as the programmer, but are, are your end users going to remember that? Possibly not. So what we do here in this case is to take this particular query logic and save it as metadata so that other people can build their queries off of that query logic, we would use a view structure. So I'm going to add a create view and I'm going to call it um, v fudge mart managers as and then the select statement. Now whenever you see the create statement you should realize that you're not making data, you're creating metadata, you're adding objects to the database structure. So I'm gonna run this create view and now you'll see it says command completed successfully. What did that do exactly? If I go to my object explorer and go down to views you'll see that I have this view called vFudgeMart managers and I can treat this view as a table. So for example in a new query I can type select everything from fudge mart oops man managers and it's a view so I execute that and this is the output of this query here so in a, in a way I've just created a level of abstraction if I want to see who the managers are I can just simply execute this view to see that. And then I could, you know, also join this or query it any way I want. So I can say, you know, select just the um, employee last name, employee first name, employee um, hourly wage from the view where the employee hourly wage is greater than let's say ten dollars an hour. Oh, I got a mistake here. An extra E in there. There you go. So you can see that you can still use the same elements of the select statement that you used before on the view because the view is treated as a table for all intents and purposes. What the view does though however is not create any redundant data it just creates a different way of looking at the underlying table. That's why it's called a view and as you can see in this case this condition is what we're building out for this view and then when we run this it's in equivalent to pretty much saying execute this first treat it as a table, then do this SQL on that table. Keeping with the information schema theme, I'm going to show you how you can query information schema.
to find out what views you have out there and uh, the definition of the view. So for example, here's my V Fudge Mart managers and then here's the SQL that I used to create the view. Interestingly enough, if you alter the view, um, if I wanted to change the view around, I, I would actually have to know the source select statement here to do that. So generally speaking, when you just like when you create tables, you want to save your SQL script. When you create views, you probably want to save your SQL script as well so that you don't have to uh, re-enter um, the create statement, even though at that point you would just be using alter view. So let's suppose I want to alter this view and I don't really want to change anything and just execute it and it will we'll alter the view. Okay. And same thing with um, if you wanted to get rid of the view, you could write your script like this. You could say um, drop view. So drop it, go, then recreate it. Go. You can make a little script out of this. And then it'll delete the view and then recreate the view in the script. Okay, finally I'll leave you with this. It doesn't matter how complicated the SQL statement uh, you create is. If it's something as complicated as this where you have a select with several calculations in it and it's grouping and it's joining two tables together to um, achieve some level of sophisticated reporting here. In this case we're listing out the employees, how much they make, the total hours they work for the year, their annual salary, and the number of overtime hours they accumulated in that year. You could take something like this and create a view off of it. Create view v uh, employee wages 2006 we'll say as and execute that. And then of course you can simply query the view by referring to it as a table name. There you have it. So that's our introduction to views. Um, in a later screencast we'll talk about how you can use your views with parameters in stored procedures to provide a little more flexibility in your view creation. Until then, have a good time and we'll see you later.